Hello and welcome to this episode of Hospitality Talks. Thank you so much for joining me. Feels like I've been doing these for years and then I looked and it's actually about eight months, so it so almost is a year. Um, today I'd like to welcome Paul Downing, who is Sales Director for Green King. Um, thank you so much for joining me, Paul. I really appreciate you giving me the time. Um, Obviously, your role within Green King is quite specialised because it's not specifically with the pubs. Could you just give people a quick uh, rundown of who you are and what you do within Green King, please? Uh, yeah, look, Paul Downing. Uh, joined Green King about a year ago, uh, just prior to lockdown. Run everything to do with the free trade and our national accounts business under what we call Brewing and Brands. So responsible for a, a large number of sales representatives, national accounts team, trade marketing team and also all our telesales and call centre staff as well. Fantastic, thank you so much. So talk to me, how does somebody who has just walked into a business um, deal with a situation where they're in charge of, uh, of looking after a free trade when lockdown happens back on the 23rd of March? What, what on earth did you do, Paul? <laughs> it wasn't quite what I had planned, I've got to be honest. So uh, best day plans fell apart really quickly. I think, I mean, it was, it was, it was really interesting time and very challenging for everyone. And actually it probably helped that uh, I sort of had a, a completely clean mind as to what we could and couldn't do. Um, we, we probably did two things really. Firstly, try to work out how, how you get rid of all that beer in the system. I don't think you really appreciate how much there is in there until you have to ta actually take it all out. And then secondly, we got quite practical after we'd settled our customers down uh, and really looked at, our systems is systems, processes, controls, uh, some of our plans for the future. And we had we kept a core team uh, unfurloughed and worked, you know, consistently through the whole of that period to develop a number of plans that we probably wouldn't have been able to get to uh, without that time actually. So there was some benefit in what was effectively free time for myself and my leadership team. I think that's a really interesting point because um, I, I think that the 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 companies that are going to come out of this stronger are the ones that actually took that opportunity rather than going right okay you know let's twiddle my thumbs i've got nothing to do it's laying plans for the future and obviously i work quite closely with the pub partner side of green king so i'm aware of what they were doing what support did you were you, were you giving over the last sort of six months so so sort of just you know gearing up to um reopening and then the, the sort of period of reopening that we had, what were you doing for your customers over that period? I think, what, so, I mean, prior to reopening, as I said, we developed a number of sales plans, uh, you know, a few being uh, developed the house lager concept, uh, our seasonal ale plan, a specific London plan that really sort of, we try to meet customers' needs. And then we, we brought our people back probably earlier than most, I think, because we understood that there were a lot of difficult conversations that need to be had with individual customers who are, you know, finding it as challenging as we were to navigate what was effectively a new world and also coming out of um, coming out of the lockdown with, you know, serious levels of debt, product and all of those sort of things that would have been concerning them on an individual basis. So, you know, outside of sorting out our plans, it was really about giving as much one to one time as we possibly could with the customers to work through individual specific issues. And, and to be honest, my sales team did a fantastic job there. We're not perfect. I know we didn't get it right 100% of the time, but we tried to give enough time to everyone we spoke to just to try and fix what was concerning them the most at that point in time. Can, can I just ask you, what were those main challenges that you were seeing out there, other than the initial challenge of what the hell do we do with all this beer, which is yeah. just a heartbreaking problem to have? Um, what, you know, what problems were you seeing out there that you felt that you could support with? Well, I mean, the, there was a couple of things really. First one was they had full sellers of beer, whether it be, you know, half full or full kegs, which meant they had no space for, for product to come in. And obviously they had a huge amount of value tied up in that stock. A lot of them obviously had either loans or outstanding debt with us. So it really was a question of sitting down with them and trying to work out specifically for each individual what was the right thing to do for them and, and for Green King, but try and, Try and make it personal as opposed to just a big company saying, this is what we're going to do for everyone. Uh, our SDMs, our sales development managers, went out and sat down and spoke with pretty much everyone to try and sort it out at a local level. 
Wow, that sounds like a, a pretty big job considering the size of the sort of free trade that you serve, I would imagine. And so what, is there anything else that you could do? I mean, you also, you mentioned earlier about having a sort of, se a separate sort of London plan. You had, you know, why was that different from the rest of the country? Is that, was there a reason for that or? Uh, just that well, our brands weren't uh, performing particularly strongly in the London area. And we felt that we needed to develop uh, some different brands and initiatives and appeal more to the type of market that was London. I see. Um, we, we've got a good piece of business in there, but I don't think we do ourselves justice. So it, it wasn't it wasn't just one thing. There were a number of areas that, that we looked at, and again, we had the luxury of, of giving that responsibility to our, our London regional sales manager and say, "Come up, you've got some time now. Come back and tell us what will really work, and we could actually put the plans in place." Whereas before, we seemed to be running so fast, so a lot of this stuff didn't get airtime. So your regional managers, who are usually running around chasing their tails, um, actually got the chance to sit down and have meaningful conversations with customers. Yeah, ab absolutely. Yes, they, and they're also able to use the wider business that again had space to talk about these sort of things to develop plans that were probably better than we would have got to otherwise. But I think it wasn't just our time with customers. We also looked into our own sort of sales tools and systems and found them to be quite wanting in certain areas. So it really did allow us to, to start from scratch with our IT department to develop um, everything from our online proposition to the tools that our sales teams use in front of customers. And they're all in a much, much better place now than they were prior to lockdown. And like I said earlier, that's that's the important part is looking at how can we utilize this time? You know, we've all had downtime, but it's whether you sit there and do a jigsaw or whether you sit there and put plans in place for, for the next six months. So, so talking about those plans, what are those plans for Green King? <laughs> Are you allowed to tell? Um, me? Give me an yeah, example. Yeah, no, well, yeah, and 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 yeah. What don't we know at the moment as well? I guess because when we first talked about doing this interview, we didn't know too much about the second lockdown either, did we? So, uh, mm -hmm. but I think I, I think they're pretty stable. I tried to break them down into four areas. So you know, first, firstly, it's for our customers. Um, so I think you know we there is again still debt, and we need to help them manage their debt and monies owed uh, and their financial situations with us in a in a sensitive way. Uh, secondly, we one of the few people that continue to loan money. And I think um, I'd highlight that because what, probably one of the big things we've seen is the conversations we've had around loaning people to develop their out, outdoor spaces, uh, um, which, 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 is, which is a huge thing for me, really. So you know, there's, there's a couple of examples, the uh, Brig and Barrel in Dunbar and Hill End Tavern in Hill End in Scotland, who have obviously faced probably more challenging times than, than most. Um, but, you know, we managed to triple their, uh, their allowed capacity in conjunction with these guys through loans that massively developed outdoor space. And as that, they will say, you know, it, it's not just for now, which gets them through a really difficult period, but it actually transforms the, what their pub stands for and can deliver for consumers. Well, it's, it's the long term the business. Yeah, yeah, I mean, whether we go into another lockdown or not in January and February or next November, whatever it might be, it's helping them to, you know, because they've got to make up for lost time, so to speak. So yeah. increasing that capacity will help them long term, I guess. Yeah, so we've we, we brought out a number of uh, loan packages and offerings, one of them specifically focused on helping develop outdoor space, because, because obviously, you know, it helps them to sell more and it'll help us to sell more to them. So it's a, it's a win-win for both parties. And then, and then finally, probably, you know, one of the things that's like right at the top of my mind, we've been working through for the last six or seven months, is, is how we leverage the Green King scale and take some of those savings to our free trade partners. So we naturally do it with our sort of pub partners, lease and tenancy um, partners. Um, but we're gonna now try and take that a step further to, to our free trade partners. But at, the, at a time when, you know, reducing their cost base is probably gonna be one of the uh, biggest things on their mind and one of the most challenging things within their business at the yeah. moment. Yeah. yeah. And so in your mind then, just to, to finish on our prediction, Sorry to put you on the spot, but you know, are we looking at positive? Um, are we are we looking positively at twenty twenty one? Are we? Are, do we think that the support that has been given to the industry out there will see the majority through, or do you think we're looking at losing? You know, I mean, the predictions are we're losing around twenty percent uh, of the industry. You know, what are, what are your thoughts on twenty twenty one? So I'm forever an optimist on these sort of things. I've worked in the on-trade for a long time. I love the on-trade and it's amazing how it bounces back, no matter what sort of put in front of it. There will be difficult times and we will use outlet, lose outlets. 
but I'm pretty sure there'll be other entrepreneurs waiting to come back in once, uh, once the trade looked up. From a Green King point of view, we identified quite a lot of opportunities right at the start in January, and we've had the opportunity now to, to, to develop them, plan them, and we'll be launching those in 2021. Everything from sales tools and systems to new types of loans to how we support car scale, which I should say is, is probably the most challenging category to be involved in because of its relatively short life. We have to uh, drive rate of sale and encourage our customers to, to take the full range that they took prior to lockdown and give them that confidence to work again in this category. All of those we have plans for. So really exciting times, not without their challenges, I'm sure. But as I said, I'm optimist. So 2021 will be a good year. Oh, that's fantastic. And that is where I'm going to stop because that's exactly what I want to hear from people in the know in the trade. So Paul Downing from Green King, thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to catching up and maybe having a cast ale with you on the other side of all of this. Fantastic. Look forward to it. Thanks, Paul.